What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are back with a video you guys have been requesting for some time, maybe even several weeks now. The boys wanted a fantasy draft updated guide. They're gonna get an updated guide. So before I do anything, I want to show you guys how to actually start a fantasy draft just in case some of you guys, you know, don't know. Also, if you guys didn't know, I had a second channel. I, I have one. I turned, it's not past tense. It's PK or plays. It's uh, probably in the description. Might even be at the end of the video uh, with a link. You know, some sort of video link. Maybe GTA San Andreas, whatever. But all the non-Madden, non-sports games are uploaded over there, and I have a lot of fun over there. And maybe you guys would enjoy that. Maybe think about subscribe. Maybe check it out. I don't know. But of course, I already have a uh, a team here that I want to use for this. But I will show you how to do it anyways. So, of course, you start your roster normal. Use active roster. You want to make sure you have the most updated roster. So, it's, you know, similar to this, of course. Check the upload date when you're watching this video. Because, obviously, some of you guys watch maybe a couple of weeks down the line. Which, it should still be pretty accurate until maybe, like, the playoffs. Um, but, you know, don't don't come in, like, January and be like, This is so wrong. None of these play. It's like, yeah, I know. None of the players went where they were supposed to. It's pretty obvious. But, of course, choose your team. We're, I don't know why I'm doing the Jaguars all the time, but basically all you have to do, starting point, fantasy draft. Now, if you're trying to redo to get a certain draft pick, which I did, I don't know if there's actually a way to choose your draft pick, but the main thing you want to do is turn off pre-existing injuries. That's the thing you need to do if you're trying to reset all the time. And then once you get the one you like, then obviously you can turn off injuries, fatigue, all that. kind of depends on what you're doing in your league. And then basically, you hit start playing, and then the fantasy draft's right there. So all you have to do is draft, and just in case I get lucky, you never know, I might get the pick I'm looking for. Who That would be insane, but could you imagine? And I do not I get pick five, which, I mean, it's not a bad pick at all, but let us go into the actual one that I've set up, and we will uh, kind of get into the strategy for how we're going to be drafting here. All right, so this is the actual team we're going to be doing this with. Pick 12, which is actually almost perfect. I would say anywhere from 10 to 12 is perfect. Miles Garrett goes all around the place. 8 to 12 is kind of his official spot. And that's typically what I'm going to do in this one. You could go cornerback, but my goal is to get Marlon Humphrey in the second round. I don't know if that's going to happen now. Uh, of course... One of the things that a lot of people, uh, you know, like to do is draft a quarterback in the first round. But realistically, with the way uh, the abilities are in this game, Escape Artist makes every quarterback OP as hell. Same as Gunslinger, which I think Mahomes may have both, which is really good. So if you want to have, in my opinion, an unfun franchise, go with pick one, I suppose. Get Mahomes, go pick two, maybe Lamar or maybe Josh Allen or Murray. The, the trend is Escape Artist X-Factors. Uh, I wouldn't go with anyone other than these in the first round. But personally, my definition of perfect is definitely not uh, having an Escape Artist X-Factor quarterback that is just too easy to use. I like to challenge myself. Uh, so I like to go with players that aren't going to be super OP early on. Miles Garrett's a great player. The cornerbacks are a great player. You know, great players. Jalen Ramsey, Jair, maybe, maybe even Trey White, who usually goes like 16. I'd say Jair is like 13 or 14. Jalen's like 12, 13. Uh, so you could easily just go with Jalen Ramsey, who is really good. I had another one lined up, but Miles Garrett went early, and I was going to just go back to that if I couldn't get this one early enough because. A guy like Ramsey, in my opinion, guys like Ramsey, guys like Jair, White, Marlon Humphrey, they're basically the most important position or the best players you can get outside of a quarterback because they can just completely lock down whoever they're playing, especially if they're in man. But in this case, I want to go with Miles Garrett. So that's who we're going to go with. 6'4", 272, 25 years old. With the abilities he has and the speed he has, he's basically a fast Aaron Donald on the edge. I want him. I'm taking him now. The question is, will Marlon Humphrey be here? He is a super random pick. Tell me he is. Fletcher Cox goes. Now, the question is, will Justin Fields be there? Because uh, that's kind of the goal in the third round is Fields or Zach Wilson. And is Fields already gone? I think he is. Uh, it's been very 50-50. Fields usually goes like pick 9 to 10 in the third round. But the last couple of sims I've done, he actually has gone like around here. You can see he's right there. Another really good choice is Tristan Wirfs, who went back to the Buccaneers. But that's if... Uh, so what I would do, personally, if you're going to go with pick one, 
You're going to take, um, what's his name, Mahomes. I would probably go with Werfs in the second round. Pick one in the second round. He has secure protector, I believe, and he's 22. He's a superstar, really good player. You could always go with a wide receiver, maybe even Chase Young, I suppose, off the edge. But I think Tristan Werfs is a great choice. Get yourself a quarterback. Get yourself a god-tier tackle that you literally can't develop. You can't develop a lineman to become Tristan Werfs. Talent-wise, or uh, with, I mean, you can get him to the talent, but not at that age. Or the uh, superstar dev, you literally have to draft it, so you have to get lucky. Um, in this case, I think Marlon's there. Marlon is there, which is a massive win. The reason why I want Marlon so much is, once again, he's superstar, he's 25, but his abilities are really good. He has, uh, I believe it's either short zone KO or mid zone, and then deep zone KO, which means he's basically impossible to throw against. He is... Right up there. He's probably one of the top four corners in the game. I don't know about Gilmore. I know he's 30, so we're not going to talk about the age. But as far as how good he is, he's very good too. But I would say that it goes Ramsey, Trey White, Jair, and then Humphrey. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be taking Marlon Humphrey. And now we're hoping, because Fields is gone, that we're going to be going with Zach Wilson here in the third round, which would be clutch. And if he's not there, I'm going to be sad. But he almost always goes 13 or later. So I'm hoping he is here again. For me in this sim and Zach Wilson is now a, there's a lot of other options but he is you know a guy you can develop obviously pretty good starting ratings once again if I'm doing a fantasy draft I am personally going with uh Kellen Mond in round 22 that's just what I'm doing Jalen Hurts is still normal but he goes kind of near here same with Jordan Love so at this point if you're not going to get one of the good players in the first round and you're not going to get fields in the second or third you're basically down to Zach Wilson or Jordan Love, but Jordan Love goes like 21, 22 in the second round or in the third round, so there's really no point in going for Jordan. You might as well just go for Zach Wilson if you're here, which, of course, we are. So Zach Wilson's going to be our choice. There are a lot of good players here, but you need a quarterback. He's got potential, great throw power, fun player, not too OP, but once again, you're not getting that speed off of him. But we will go back and look at the transactions, and I'll compare this to my little spreadsheet thing I have, which... I will post in the description, uh, maybe also the pin comment if I remember to do it. Um, but let's go all the way back to the beginning of time here. Where, as you can see, you have the quarterbacks one, two, three, four. Uh, I have seen Josh Allen go number two, sometimes, uh, you know, usually number three. Um, Josh Allen at four, five for Dak. That's how my latest one went six for Wilson, same Herbert, seven. Eight was Rodgers for me. Uh, and then Trevor was nine, but this one's flipped. Do not know why um, Bosa is so high. He's nowhere near as good as Miles Garrett. I know he's a few years younger, but he's so much slower. Um, but most of this is pretty accurate so far. I usually have Jair going before Miles Garrett, and he does almost always go before Jalen. Uh, you can see the three, the big three there at corner. White usually goes 15 or 16, but he goes a little earlier here. Um, you can see, you know, pretty much what you would expect here. And I should have counted this, but Watson's usually almost dead last in the first round, which is insane because, yes, he's an 86 overall because EA is trying to bury bury him despite the fact that the uh, you know all the allegations haven't been confirmed or not. Um, but he's still really good. All they did was really a drop his awareness. He's like 77 awareness, still has like really good speed. His uh, throw power is in the 90s. His accuracies are near 90. Some are in the 90s. He's a great player. 86 overall is actually kind of cheese. Because once again, his overall is really dropped because of his awareness, which technically makes him easier to develop, I believe. So that's crazy. So for me, Kittle went like late uh, first, but here he's pick one in the second round. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see here a lot of these players aren't really that great. They're kind of on the older side. They're good players, but they are on the older side. They're not the best, you know, to go for. Stanley would be another great player. Superstar development trait, great tackle. Once again, you can't dev to superstar. It's all about players that, you know, once again, you can't develop. The players that are very good, but they're not broken OP. You know, like, you can go for a wide receiver like Metcalf in the first round, but it's going to be hard to play a realistic franchise when you see Metcalf is open 24-7 down the field on a streak because the game's broken. So, I mean, personally, I don't like to go wide receiver too early. I like to develop all my guys. So, once again, perfect is different for every person. Go 10, 11, 12, 13. Chase Young has gone to 13 like 90% of the time for me. Mac Jones, ironically enough, at 15 most of the time. Worfs almost always at 14. I have seen him at 18 sometimes, but 
Yeah, that's pretty much that. Fields, usually, like I said, you know, kind of early in the third, but this, I mean, he's been going high for me lately. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, of course. Burns has been in this spot a lot. Vita Vea. So if you get to the pick we're at and Marlon Humphrey's not there, I would absolutely recommend Vita Vea because I think he has El Toro now because he's a superstar. He is easily the best nose tackle in Madden. He's so good. Parsons could be fun, but meh. So it would probably go with uh, Marlon for sure and then Vita Vea afterwards. But yeah, there's a lot of choices. Patrick Sertain, he's superstar, but... Obviously, you're going to kind of develop need. Uh, Tua goes before Zach Wilson, which is kind of laughable in-game. Uh, Jamar Chase is pretty fun. Uh, Sewell, once again, another superstar lineman. You can't draft those. Uh, well, you can, you can draft them, but you can't develop those. Jordan Love, like I said, not too much farther behind Zach Wilson, despite being a lot worse. Fitzpatrick is another really good player. I think Diggs may be superstar. I don't know what his abilities are, but he's probably like an Xavier Howard guy where, yes, he's superstar, but he's an overrated superstar because and people are like, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, because it's probably going to be like pick artists and something like tip drill or something. It's not going to be good coverage abilities. Those are the abilities you want. Grady Jarrett's old, but really good abilities as well. Winston. Okay, Jalen Waddell. Uh, I have him as an early fourth. So uh, where are we actually now? Because we are uh, got to be already in the fourth round. Um, so we now have pick 21 in the fourth round. So... If you had an earlier pick than this, I would have had uh, Denzel Ward at 25. So we might actually clutch up and have a sick roster. Denzel Ward is there. This is tough. This is really tough for me because, once again, I just mentioned I don't want an OP team. But having corners with Marlon Humphrey and Denzel Ward out there, that is really tough because those are very good players and they kind of ruin it, right? Like, they're so good this is really tough for me. I don't know. You have corners in the fifth round as well. I will say the fifth round is not really that great for me here. I'm not really liking what we got in the fifth round. Maybe Devin White would be the choice. I don't know. I mean, we've got a couple of corners later on, you know, some lower end guys, but Denzel Ward, man, that is a tough guy. I would have loved to see Waddle here, but he is a you know very early uh, fourth round guy. Once again, there's so many developable wide receivers. I have like uh, Claypool later, um, what's his name, Hardman, and A.J. Brown a little bit later. I mean, there's so many good players there. I don't know. A.J. Brown's not that late. He's like a fifth rounder. It might even be our choice if he's there, but once again, it's all about what you want to do. I don't know what you want to do. You know, you got to decide that for yourself. This could be OP, but it's not OP in the sense that, like, you're going to score 100 points a game. So Denzel Ward's my choice. Just too talented not to grab. I mean, look at how good he is, dude. He's just an athletic freak. He's like a prime uh, Patrick Peterson, basically. But some of the other picks around that would have been pick 26, Max Crosby, 27, Jeffrey Simmons. That might have actually been a better choice. Tunsil at 28, uh, Kenny Clark at 29, uh, Quinnen Williams at 31, Roquan at 32. Early in the fifth, we had Deron Payne at pick four. You have Rashawn Gary at five. You have A.J. Terrell at seven. Josh Allen, the edge rusher, eight, Braden Smith. 12 would be Franklin Myers. And then right here, around where we are now, 13 would have been A.J. Brown. Do not know if he's there, though. We'll take a look. And he is. Of course, you could also see Calvin Ridley there. 24 years old, A.J. Brown. Decently fast for his size. Once again, another really fun player. 71 trucking's got to be one of the highest for any wide receivers. Really good juke move. Super, super fun player. Great release. Lacking in the route running a little bit. Not perfect. Like, he's not... Completely done. You don't have to worry about him. Calvin Ridley, a little bit faster, but also two years older. So if I was going to go wide receiver, I'd go A.J. Brown. I don't know if that two I have is my choice, though. Because you do also have the DTs that are going to be gone literally the next round. You have Derek Brown, who's a very good player, 23. DT's not the easiest to develop, but it is a very easy position to draft. And because of that knowledge, I think you just got to pass on him. I really do. So... I think you go for a super fun user, Devin White. I mean, he's still got plenty of time to develop. He's still not perfect, but super fun, super good. So Devin White's going to be my choice here in the, I'll be honest, a little earlier than I would have liked. Once again, a late fifth round pick, but we obviously had an early fifth round there as Calvin Ridley goes. Some of the other choices, uh, once again, in the fifth round, we had uh, A.J. Brown at 13, Hassan Reddick at 14, Harold Landry at 15, uh, Carl Lawson at 18, Dante Jackson at 21. That's a really good pick. Bradley Chubb at 22. That's a really good pick. Uh, 23 for Stephon Tewitt. A little old, but super fun because he's huge. Dexter Lawrence at 24. Trayvon Mullen at 25. Jamel Dean at 26. Taylor Moten at 27. A really good pick. 
28, Greg Newsome, probably a little early, but that's when he's that's when he goes. Elton Jenkins at 30, really good pick. Devin White at 31, we obviously took him early. Uh, Hawkinson at three in the sixth round. Jalen Hurts at five. If you want someone fast and you don't want you missed on the other guys, maybe six and eight were Derek Brown and Ed uh, Oliver. Pick twelve is C.D. Lamb. Sixteen Ragnow. Very good pick. Deion Jones at 17, Calvin Ridley at 18, which if we look at it here, he went 20. So, I mean, very, very accurate. And now at 21, we have a player. I don't go running back early, but this is a very fun guy. Still has time to develop. I don't know if he's actually there, though. I would have assumed he would have been way higher overall. Yeah, he would have been much higher overall than this. He would have been gone for Went all the way to four. Once again, it's not perfect. So you obviously have to kind of go with the role. That's why we have this list because some of the players will go after when expected. Some will go before. So I would have liked Jonathan Taylor. but So now this is tough for me, but I'm actually going to go with a lineman. I'm going to go with Rashawn Slater here. He usually goes like, let us see where we have him going. 31. So this is a really good pick for uh, Rashawn Slater. We're going to be taking him. Once again, it kind of depends on what you're doing. The The thing that kind of sucks about going with a guy like Miles Garrett and Rashawn Slater is those guys are very dependent on sliders. A lot of the times, if you don't have really good sliders, O-line and D-line play really doesn't play a huge factor. It's really just kind of dependent on sliders. So that's the only thing that does suck. But if you have your sliders good, it's not the worst thing to do. You know, it's not the worst pick in the world. Uh, but instead of going with uh, Rashawn Slater. You could have went Wills, another tackle at 30. Marquise Brown at 28. He's super fast, but we have other similar guys to him, and he is semi-injury prone. Um, but the pick here, assuming we didn't sell, should be almost purely obvious. And, oh my, did we sell? Is he not there? He actually isn't freaking there. I had him going at 21. And in this one, he goes at like... Nine. That's such an L. I mean, there's nothing I could do. It's, it's com you know, I want to keep saying completely random, but there's a lot of just randomness. So you can see Wills goes way after. Uh, and then you have some of these guys that go, you know, exactly the same time you would expect. You know, I, I don't know. That's just unfortunate that Noah Fant goes early. I can't believe he went early, though. That is a scam. And the thing that sucks is, you know, another really good tight end here, Dawson Knox, who's made his way up the ranks. Uh, he is like an early eighth. So if you want him, you literally can't get him unless you grab him here, which I don't think the value is there for him. I, I just don't see it. Now, because we got screwed over on Fant, which is a massive L, I actually can't believe we got cucked that hard. Uh, you could go ETN, pick nine in the 13th round, but I'm going to go Saquon, who's a late seventh round pick so Saquon Barkley super good still obviously the only downside is 81 injury but outside of that I mean very good player 97 stamina 90 toughness once again you get plus two injury every single season you get plus four or five injury for the uh the staff thing so injury is not really an issue and of course super good super fun so Saquon Barkley I mean he's not because now he's star you can still have fun developing him to become a uh, you know a superstar or X Factor, get some of those abilities back. But yeah, that's not the way you wanted to go. Daniel Jones at pick twenty two is probably the best quarterback choice remaining. Super fun, normal dev, very fast, lots to develop there. I mean, best case scenario, you develop him to X Factor in three seasons. We also have Davenport potentially at eighteen. Um, maybe should have looked for him actually. Away at twenty six. Uh, Simmons at thirty. Of course, Barkley at twenty nine, but we took him early. Uh, my lot of the big tackle at pick two in the eighth round, uh, Kenneth Murray at seven, Dalton Knox at eight, Kinlaw at 17, and then James Daniels at 21. Uh, we also have some other linemen potentially here. Wynn at 23, Winfield at 26, Onwenu at 27, and then Queen at 30. Um, obviously, there's a bunch of really good players here. Next round, even though it's not really working out to our, our liking, is probably going to be Isaiah Simmons, which could be your safety if you didn't want to put him at middle linebacker, which or keep him in a middle linebacker, which is, I mean, kind of a question mark from you if you're doing that. But Patrick Queen's a pretty good choice. Uh, Devin Bush is kind of near here as well. He's uh, middle of uh, round nine. Joke is middle of round nine. So if you want to grab some of those guys, you'd have to do it now. Um, this is a tough choice for me. I kind of want to see if any of the linemen are still there. Because once again, the linemen go pretty quickly. You know, they're obviously kind of uh, gone already. Also, I don't remember seeing Trey Smith. 
He's obviously start of element trait. I mean, super low injury, but once again, offensive lineman, you really don't get hurt too much in Madden Sim. And I forgot Michael on Wenu is a tackle now in the game, but that 55 speed is really hard to draft. You know what? I'm going to allow jumping around and a half. Isaiah Simmons just so good of a user. You can't miss on him. So even though he's like pick eight in the 10th round, if we want him and Jeremy Chin, who are very OP at their positions, you kind of need to, right? Because we have pick 21 here, so we're not going to be able to get uh, really either of them. You might might be able to get away with Jeremy Chin here, which I think I might actually let it happen. Hopefully you get lucky because you do have Darnell Savage in round 11 at pick 11, so he would obviously be there. So maybe not as good as Chin, but still usable there. And, uh, you know, also another fun player. Super fast, just smaller, really. Just smaller, a little bit worse in the hit power, but pretty fast, right up there with him. Um, so I think you risk Chin... And if he's there next round, you really hit. Yeah, I'm not seeing Quiddy Pay or Ojulari, which is just super harsh, man. We are getting a lot of unlucky things here. Quiddy Pay goes three picks before us, which I'd imagine. Yeah, Ojulari, like 15 picks before I expected. I mean, that is tough. I don't want to go with Devin Bush because in round 36, I have Divine Diablo and Nasir Ladin at 6 and 36, which are both former safeties playing linebackers. So if you're in a user, you just have like the I you know a rule where you can't trade positions or anything like that, you know, it's not against the rules. You know, they're there. It's allowed. So I don't know. I think process of elimination, we're gonna go for another lineman. Eric McCoy, a very good player, 24, long time to play on your team. Obviously, I would move him to guard or tackle because he's fast. He's, he's a really good, you know, kind of do-it-all lineman. So that's going to be our choice. And then we're going to hope Jeremy Chin's there. And if he's not, we may go Darnell Savage. Once again, there's a bunch of different options. Uh, Swift goes, which is kind of where I expect him to go, I believe. But let's see, Jeremy Chin be a clutch man. And he's there, which is huge. Because once again, on my list, I had Jeremy Chin going exactly at 21, which is where we are here. Dobbins at 22. Creed Humphrey at 6. 11 for Savage. 13 for Asante Samuel, and then Darisaw at 15 with Gross Matos at 16. Those are two players I absolutely want. But once again, similar to Isaiah Simmons, this is a player I do not want to lose. So good. And yeah, I mean, definitely going to grab him. He's just so freaking beastly. And once again, still can develop him. He's just so fast and good, though. Oh, Darisaw is not who I thought it was. I thought it was Kinlaw, but realistically, Kinlaw's not even a good player anyways. Uh, but let's take a look at Gross Matos, who, if he is there, I may take him because we don't have another edge. Uh, he is star, but once again, at this point, when players are, like, this lacking of talent, is it even worth going for a guy that's star? You might as well just go for a normal dev, which we can go with someone like Osai in round 28, which would be clutch, which I'd probably go at 27 because I always get cucked when I'm, I'm waiting on one last guy. It always happens. And by the way, once it hits, like, picks 15 or 16... A lot of the talent kind of goes away. It is crazy how quick it goes, but it does. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, and I'm really worried about losing Irv Smith in around 22. I really like Irv Smith, and I've never been able to use him in the game. It's really in insane, but, uh, you know, 23 years old. He is 6'2", which sucks, but very good blocker. Uh, decent truck ability, especially for a guy that's 6'2", 86 speed, 86 XL. You do have a couple of other speed options later on, but Irv Smith probably would be one of my higher picks. I do like him quite a bit. He's fun, and once again, you need to develop him, which is probably the most fun part about franchise, in my opinion. And now this is kind of a round early, but once again, it's unfortunate timing. We're at pick 12. Our next round, which is where I would have him going, uh, he would be gone. So uh, realistically, you have to draft him early. Some of the other choices, though, would be... Uh, round 11, we would have Creed Humphrey at 6. Once again, we're past that. Savage at 11, so maybe he's there for you. Uh, Sante Samuel at 13, the cornerback. 15 for Darisaw, 16 for Gross Matos. Uh, what else we have? 24 for CJ Henderson. Jamin Davis, a very good player at 27. I'll show you guys some of his... Once again, a guy you can develop, obviously, but he's already got a decent platform. The reason why I'm not going for him is, once again, I have those linebackers later, and I typically like to, you know, develop them personally. Whereas you can see here, yes, Jamin Davis is, you know, technically a low overall, but 6'4", 22 years old, 90 speed, 92 excel, uh, 95 jumping. He's insane. He's got star already. I mean, that's just crazy. Um, 
What else did we have? We had we had AVT, Elijah Vera Tucker, the left guard at 30, which was a really close one for me. Uh, and then pick 12 or pick two in the 12th round, Julian Blackman, JC Horn at eight, Greedy Williams at 16, and then the guy we're going to take now, Caleb Farley. The reason why you got to take Caleb Farley is because his build is so broken, dude. Hidden development trait, 6'2", 22 years old, 95 speed, 95 excel, 71 catching, 91 jumping. The only downside he has is toughness and injury. And once again, we already told you how easy it is to get your injury up this year. You get the plus four, I think it is. Is it five? It's either four or five from your staff. And then you get plus two for the bye week. So that's a plus six year one. He's an 85 injury. Just don't hit stick with him. Just tackle and if you even need to because you might just pick the ball off every damn time. Going to go with Caleb Farley, even though we already have two good corners. Maybe you didn't have Marlon Humphrey and you went Vita Vane instead, which in this case would actually be a win because Caleb Farley, number two, isn't quite Denzel Ward, but it's you know he's basically like a mini Ward. You can always go Albert O later on. It's so tough. We don't have a single option on offense, but that's usually the way I like it. But you know what? Just for this case, because I've always missed him, I'm going to go with Irv Smith here. Why not? Once again, super sleeper in Madden because look at that run block. 68 four run block, which actually might be a little bit lower than I expected, but 69 impact, very good route running, fast enough to get the job done. And believe it or not, that's some of the higher trucking and stiff arm in the game at tight end. I mean, you don't expect, you know, a guy like a sicky, he's like 77 trucking at best. I think he is like 73, 74. You don't get great trucking in this game at, at tight end. Yet those guys will get it done. 6-2 is a little unfortunate, but, you know, obviously still usable. And now here, I'm really hoping our player is there. And if he's not, we can still get a different option. And my player here is finally another wide receiver. Well, another receiver. And that would be, if he's there, uh, Elijah Moore. Now, this is a little tough because Elijah Moore is very good. But you also have Chase Claypool. I think if Claypool's there, which he should be. Come on, game. Don't let me down. Where is my boy? Come on, he's somewhere in here. There's so many star development trades. I gotta find him. Yo, I don't even. This is the furthest off my list has ever been. He went two rounds early. There's no one that's even been close to that. The most we've ever seen was like 12. Well, I don't feel as bad now because that was way earlier than expected. Uh, of course, maybe not as good, and maybe a guy that would have actually chosen to play tight end for us, Chase Claypool. But you still have other options. The two main options being Hardman and Chark. Chark being 6'4", 24 years old. He's starting to get up there. And you know, he used to be my like super sleeper, you know, young, fast guy. He's starting to get up there. Very developable. A guy that you need to develop, but very fast. DJ Chark is our number one wide receiver. I like it. It's not good that our tight end is shorter than our wide receiver, but here we are. Once again, a little early. I had Chark going 9 in the 14th round, but once again, we have seen Chase Claypool went two rounds early, so unless you were going to go with Elijah Moore there, who might have been there like late third, I can't remember. I, I, maybe. Maybe he would have been there still. Um, CJ Henderson, no, that's way earlier. Noah Iguanagany, Chase Claypool, apparently not. Uh, Trayvon Merrick, 14 and pick 4 in this round. Obviously, Hardman and 8. Uh, Chark was nine, like I said. Delpit at twelve. Ron Dalemore at twenty-six, and then we're starting to, you know, fall off a little bit here. With round fifteen, you have Jerome Baker. Uh, Ten, you have Rosu, uh, Russo. Uh, Seventeen is Tevin Jenkins. Twenty-two is Chase on. Twenty-six is Cl uh, Cleveland Farrell. The talent is starting to drop off tremendously. Without a doubt, it's tremendously dropping off. If Hardman's there, that is so clutch. But I would not expect him to be. Uh, that's that's a lot to ask for. And he is not, unfortunately. There are some other options, but, you know, we can wait later. There's uh, other guys like Anthony freaking uh, Schwartz. That's the one. I don't know who the hell I'm talking about. Maybe even Kadarius Tony. There's a lot of options, so I'm not even worried about it. Yeah, a lot of my players are gone way early. You might have to take this list with a grain of salt outside of, like, the first three rounds. You might have to say, like, 10, 15 picks early because, I mean, some of my players are going way after, but a lot of them are going early. Uh, you know, seeing guys like uh, Jerome Baker gone is a little surprising. Hardman went a little bit after expected, I believe. But Baker went way earlier. Way earlier there. A little bit of an L, but, um, you know, we'll we'll pull through. You know what? We're actually going to... I don't even know if I would call it a reach, but we're going to be taking Tevin Jenkins here. Another offensive lineman. 23 star. Very solid. 6'6". Very athletic. Good player. Could play guard if you really wanted him to, but... 
I'm going to take him here because I actually have a couple of safeties coming up that I think are really fun in the game. And uh, they're going to be players that I want to go for. So 15. Once again, this is early because I would have actually had um, Tevin Jenkins potentially here still. But if I want a guy like, where the hell is he? Uh, Edmonds, I would have to go early. Terrell Edmonds could play linebacker for you. Where is he? My, it wouldn't be a fantasy draft guide without him, right? 87 hit power, 90 speed, 90 excel, 77 zone, 69 catching. You get it. He's a god. He could play linebacker realistically. So don't yell at me. Just take the player and, you know, move on with your life. And once again, we're going a little bit early for a lot of these players, but you've seen that we've been getting cucked. So you can't blame me for going early. Uh, this is going to be Kadarius Tony. This is a guy that I would have had pick 20 in the next round. But if you go to 12, we've seen that the guys are going early. So I'm going to go with Mr. Uh, Kadarius Tony here. Some of the other choices would have been uh, at pick 20 in round 16, which, you know, we would have passed that. Would have been Terrell Edmonds. Uh, pick 5 in the 17th round is Jonathan Abram. Uh, Austin Jackson at 12. Tony, once again, pick 20. Akeem Davis Gaither at 28. And then we'll get to the next ones afterwards. But, of course, Kadarius Tony. Not really being used well in real life, but in Madden, super fun, super elusive, great player, and, you know, a little bit of lightning to our Chark. I mean, he's kind of lightning as well, but supposedly Thunder, because he's 6'4", I guess. And like I said, pick 12 was Austin Jackson. He went 11, so maybe not perfect, but close enough. Of course, Akeem Davis Gaither, not a guy I would personally go for, but 6'2", 23 years old. Uh, you get the gist. Very fast, good jumping, decent enough catch. He's a great player, but once again, I'm going to go for those safety convert linebackers and uh, kind of just cheese the thing up. And Jonathan Abram's still there. I know he's 24, but another Terrell Edmonds type, a little bit smaller, but still there. I mean, it would be nice to move one of them inside. The problem is this is kind of when all the safeties are going, which is why you know we're kind of being drawn towards these picks. But I mean, I think you make the case for one of the guys that we have that are very large uh, safeties and very athletic to play linebacker. So Jonathan Abrams is going to be the choice. Once again, it depends on what you're willing to do. And if you're in, you know, in a user league, which I mean, unless it's like a two, maybe at max three man, this is probably going to be kind of an irrelevant video anyways for you. Cause user league is going to completely throw off the timing on a lot of these things. And how surprisingly or not, uh, Diami Brown, is there another guy that I would have liked to take or take in because, once again, start of element trade, decently fast. But, you know, going from normal to start isn't that crazy for a wide receiver. The only guarantee or the good thing about going for a real-life wide receiver is if they have feet and bounds trait. But I haven't really noticed that that trait even comes into play often, which, which is probably why they don't have it for rookies that you actually draft. So, I don't know, maybe if we're, it's last choice, but kind of want to go for some other picks if we can. So, once again, we're reaching. Quinn Miners is pick 8 in 19, but... He's a really good lineman who's uh, obviously athletic. He can probably play guard for center for you. Obviously, he can play guard because he's literally at guard and he's he's very mobile. But with that size, 6'3", probably move him inside, which I believe, I'm going to make sure, does finish the line. I don't want to draft too many. So you have one there. How many tackles? Three. So no, we have two more we need to grab. Really? I thought we would have had four. But okay, more reason to draft him then, I suppose. Quinn Miner is going to be the choice here. Uh, where is my boy? I really like to draft him. He usually goes later, but once again, the eye's getting smarter and smarter each update. You know, I'm surprised we even have these players here. So uh, we're going to go with Quinn Miners here. Once again, early next round pick, but we're not going to have an early next round pick. The best we're going to get is 12, which we needed, you know, like five picks earlier than this. Now for the next round, it's pick one in pick or in round 20. Tyson Campbell, if you still need a corner, is not a bad choice. The jumping's a little rough. Catching's not great, but... 92 speed, 92 excel for a 6-1 corner. Another good choice would be the Packers rookie Eric Stokes. Uh, 22 years old, 74 overall, but 95 speed, 93 excel, 91 jumping, 68 catching. Uh, that's definitely the choice out of the two, but we really don't need corner. But then again, I don't really have anyone else here, so I guess depth? I don't, I don't know if I like it, but... It, once again, we're to the point where it's it's really hard to draft players. I mean, I'll, I'll look through the names, just show you guys. If you go, if you guys know franchise like me, you should know a lot of the names are kind of on the older side or whatnot. So, Hankins can't use Paramount sucks. Um, and, well, okay, well I'll just go old, 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 not good, old, not great, not great, not great. Once again, decent, 
young, but not as good as the others. Good pick. I had him on my list. Slow, uh, slow, 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 old and old, <laughs> not great. Old for a guy that's not that great. He's like 24 already, and you, you know, we had better choices. Old, 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 uh, old, old, not even great. Old, old, uh, well, actually, no, not good, not good, old, old, uh, can only play one position. <laughs> no, not good and old, not good and old, old, uh, not bad, actually, good value pick. We took Stokes, it was good. Uh, not great, old, uh, not great, not great, decent actually, not great, good, but you know, star dev isn't hard to get, he was a pretty basic looking wide receiver, slow, old, 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 I mean, you could see the names here, they are not very good players, these are all like 74, 75 overalls, and they're old, you know, this is a decent pick, this is a good pick, but he's really slow, uh, and he's not even that young anymore. I think he's like 23, 24. He really didn't develop that well early on in our Dolphins franchise. Uh, old as hell. Not great. I mean, you can't dev him. Too old. Um, old, not great, but, you know, hidden development or star dev. Not bad. Old, terrible, young. But once again, we took Quinn Miner. So, I mean, you see the players. They're not very good, you know. So, if you feel like our, we're you know we're reaching a little bit or some of our overalls aren't great... Like I said, past round 15, the AIs, I mean, most of the players are gone. You used to be able to get to round 30 with still having great players, but in Madden, not so much. The game uh, the game kind of knows how to draft now, which I like. And now here, if you want to cheese the hell out of it, which I don't know if I really want to, um, pick 21 uh, or pick 5 in the 21st round is when Antonio Brown goes. And obviously at 23 uh, or 33, he could probably last two seasons for you. I don't want him, but once again, if you're trying to go OP draft, like you decided to go the Mahomes route instead, I would obviously go Antonio Brown. You're not going to get a better value at this round uh, 89 overall pick in round 2021. I mean, there's just no chance you're going to get anything close to as good as that, like just at all. It's just not even close. The real thing that sucks is that, I mean, you probably should be drafting DT in the first three rounds because there really isn't much left. I have like two maybe DTs left. It's it's not a great look. It's a lot of corners. So once again, when you had Denzel Ward, if there was another choice, maybe J uh, Jeffrey Simmons, which I really regret now if he was there, which I think he was. Take Jeffrey Simmons. It happened last time we did this. I realized super late in that we didn't need a certain position, uh, and you know we should have went for it. Vita Vea would have been a great choice in the second round too, but I think he actually was gone before Marlon, but you can't blame it. Marlon's a, a great cornerback. Obviously, our team is sick, and it's stacked, but you don't really need as many good corners as we had. I mean, Stokes and Farley are good enough at number two, potentially, with, you know, how, I wouldn't say easy it is to develop corners, but when you have a fast corner that's good, technically how easy it is. Because at this point, we're basically looking at all, like, you know, cornerbacks and wide receivers. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on outside of cornerback and wide receiver here, and a little bit of linebacker, but what are we missing? So we're missing... Got the quarterback, got the running back. Uh, we need wide receivers. We'll get that, obviously. Tight end's fine. We're missing one O-lineman, which we will get. D-line's where we're struggling, but we're hoping to get Osai. DT struggle. Linebacker will get that solved. Actually, I don't even know if we need to. We we actually probably already have all three linebackers. So I suppose we just have a good team anyway. So, I mean, even though, you know, we're not seeing a lot of great DTs or anything like that, we do have a good team, so... So with this pick, I'm kind of going to go with a fun player. Six foot three, uh, decently fast, good jump ball guy. I will say he does have the drops open pass trade, uh, and he doesn't have possession, but drops open pass doesn't seem to actually factor. Super fun guy. He's like a jump ball go-get-it. He's only 21. Uh, so many wide receiver options, but realistically, that's kind of the best one. And now uh, I believe our backup running back should be here, who's super fun to use. And is he? He is. So you do have a couple of choices. You have A.J. Dillon, who I think is the most fun to use out of all of these guys because you already have Saquon, who's kind of a multi-purpose, super fast back, whereas Elijah Mitchell, um, he does have truck ability, but he's nowhere near as trucky as Dillon. So, I mean, if I'm going to go with a backup, I'd probably go Dillon. But if I'm going to go with a guy that I think is OP, I'd probably just go with Niang, uh, or what's his name, um, Nwangwu in the 30th round so we'll probably still grab him anyways but aj dillon's gonna be our backup running back super fun trucky guy maybe even plays fullback if you really wanted to cheese it Ooh, i'd even think about it but kellen mond i wonder if he's still there if he is that's who i want but if he's not it is what it is 
And we did sell. Kellen Mond is gone. Kellen, how could you? I think he's star. Mmm, that strength is sucky. I really like Kendrick Green more, to be honest. Even though he's normal, he is so good comparatively. Like, look at the lead block. Look at the impact. I mean, star is great and all. I want to choose Kendrick Green over him. I just got to make sure that Kendrick Green actually goes around here because I thought he goes even further than this. Yeah, I have Kendrick Green go in 28th round, so never mind. And once again, I mean, the, the talent's kind of gone. I'm just going to start reaching for players I know I want. Albert Okuebunam, 23 years old, 6'5". May even, if you decide in the end, you're like, hey, I want someone that's tall. May even start him over Irv Smith if you really wanted to. I still like Irv Smith more, though. De Deving tight ends isn't easy. Um, you're going to have to dev your guy from normal to star, and then you're going to be in the predicament that Irv Smith will have as well. Start at tight end devs don't exist unless you get a breakout, so you're better off trying to get a breakout uh, in the full season, maybe two seasons you get with Irv Smith as a starter, Well, whereas you have to automatically wait until you get star for OK Okue Bunam anyways, so I think that's the best choice. Now this is a pick because his strength is so low. He's a strange individual, but I like him for the hybridness. Put him at uh, edge, put him at DT. I mean, you at least have an option there. Edge is probably where you'd want him. Uh, he's just a freak athlete, really. But once again, the, the names here aren't really worth mentioning unless you're going wide receiver, which, of course, we already have three of. So we may still grab one or two, but overall, we're not, you know, we're not really pushing for it. But yeah, at this point, we're, I mean, we're kind of just reaching. So should we not just, like, grab all the players we want and just not risk it? I think that's what we're going to do. This is a guy that's super raw, but I've always loved uh, just the way he's built. 6'4", 21 years old. Uh, usable, obviously. 85 speed, 90 XL. I don't know what the traits are, but I'm going to grab him. He's, he's the guy I've always kind of wanted at edge. You've got options. And once again, you have Miles Garrett there to carry that, uh, that defense, which is, once again, I like to develop players. So developing uh, these players is the most fun to me. And that's, that's what you're going to get out of these guys. And now we're moving on to some of our not great players, but once again, fun players. A guy, once again, I think was on my, my what is it called, sleeper rookie list, Tommy Togiai. I don't know if that's how you say his name. I apologize. I believe he's a Browns rookie. But 72 speed, not like the hugest guy in the world, but 21 years old, 71 block shed. Power moves a little lacking, but 91 strength. 82 excels, not bad. 83 hit power. I mean, he's a really good player. What's that injury, though? Injuries, because Samina was the low one, which is actually very common for all D linemen, especially DTs. Now, hopefully, I don't sell on Kendrick Green, because it was kind of like the last lineman I had here that was, you know, worthy of taking, I suppose. Uh, and here he is. Is Hennessy actually gone? He went way earlier than that. Actually, might have been lower overall, but Kendrick Green, a super steal at lineman. Probably the last true lineman steal now that. All these star devs like uh, Cushenberry and and Creed Humphrey go way earlier. But yeah, super good. I mean, look at how good he is. I mean, I know he's normal, but I mean, he's really good. 91 impact, 88 in, uh, lead block for a 73 overall, 71 strength, super young. I mean, it's a little undersized, but obviously EA doesn't factor that in, so they don't really see that. Just surprised to see him, you know, go as late as he does. Then we have another steal. Uh... Caden Stearns, super fast. Hit power is not great, but good enough. What's the catching? 62 catching. I will say that block shit is rough to deal with, but bit of a steal regardless. Very fast. Once again, we're going to reach a little bit higher than uh, normal. Anthony Schwartz is kind of like pick th uh, around 30 guy, but six foot tall, 20 years old. Uh, you can't miss on a 97 speed guy that goes this late. And that's 20 on top of it. I mean... You literally get him for more than a decade. If you develop him to superstar, maybe even X-Factor early on, he might be there for 15 seasons. Like, that's actually 15 seasons. And you haven't taken him yet. What are you doing? And even though we have our running backs, you can't pass on another really talented player. Nguyen Wu, super fast. I believe he actually kind of, I wouldn't say broke out recently for Minnesota, but he had a, a highlight play, I believe. So Nguyen Wu, the speedster, getting uh, drafted here. And then my favorite linebacker, please tell me he's there. I mean, I had him on my list, and he should be there, but it is Madden after all. There he is, the boy. 6'3", 22 years old, Baron Browning. The only downside to him is catching everything else is nearly flawless. Solid change of direction. I don't think it shows here, though. Decent enough coverage. 85 hit power, 87 speed, 91 excel, 93 jumping. This is why I didn't want to draft that many linebackers, but... Here we are. Yay. 
I don't know what we could have had, so I'm going to look at the list. So where is Devin White? So Devin White was at 31. We maybe could have had Elton Jenkins. But really looking at it, I think instead of Devin White, I would have reached for Ed Oliver. I think that's what the only thing I would have changed is Ed Oliver over Devin White. But Devin White is so good, dude. It's hard to pass on him. But yeah, we have so many good linebackers. It hurts. Like we have those three. And then we have the safeties who might just stay where they are now. I mean, I suppose Abram and Edmonds aren't great in coverage. So, I mean, you do kind of need three safeties in a 4-3. So, I actually think it worked out really good, actually. Never mind. I would still maybe, you know, who was it? Instead of Ward, go with uh, Simmons. And then instead of White, maybe go with Ed Oliver. And then you have a sick D-line, but... I really do like the way this turned out as well. You have Devin White and Simmons who are great users, and then you do have Baron Brownie who can develop. But I will say these two do only have stars, so if you want to make them really good, you obviously have to use them anyways. And here, I think we would have lost uh, Tucker, but Tucker has never been the number. Oh, he's still there, really? Uh, when does Tucker go? Is it around 30? Oh, it's around 35. Never mind, but Tucker's never been my favorite guy in Madden. Superstar development trade. I will say he's probably the only superstar kicker now. If I'm not mistaken, as uh, Harrison Bucker kind of fell off a little bit, but I'd still probably have Harrison as my my number one. But yeah, I never go for Tucker. Maybe in a rebuild is worth it, but in, in user league, I mean, if you're playing more than a couple of years, he's obviously not going to last that long. And then we're reaching a little bit again. I know he's 23, but this is, it's just too much fun. 93 strength, 346. Of course, you kind of obviously can tell here that one of the priorities of the draft is going to be a DT, but Still a lot of fun on those DTs, and you also have the linebackers that can kind of cover for those guys anyways. That's just too much fun, dude. 346, man. I did not. He's still there. Jabril Cox, another 23-year-old, but very fast, decent enough jumping, great catching. That's that's our guy. And I believe this is where you can actually cheese it if you really wanted to, which I, w I suppose for the sake of this video... Uh, Alex Mack, 35, uh, 85 overall, so good for one year. I'll take him, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Once again, for me personally, it's not really something I'm going to be doing constantly, but I guess if that's what you want to do, it's what you want to do. So if Tucker's important to you, this is, I think, where he would go. He would go like after this round. But for me, once again, Tucker's not even that guy. He's not that dude. But who is that dude is another guy that I believe is 23, but... Divine Diablo, I mean, 91 speed and 87 excel, 88 hit power, and because he was a convert from um, safety, his man and zone coverage is still, well, 59 man, but still rather high. Of course, the one downside is he only has 63 block shed, but 71 catching, 73 press, he's, he's kind of filthy. And then another OP linebacker, because once again, another safety convert, could always move him back to safety, but Hamza Nizriladeen. Another guy where if you're in a user league, they can't yell at you because they're technically linebackers. Now, I'm not actually sure how much kick power matters for users, but you'd maybe think about going Joey, Joey Sly over Butker. Two kick power does increase your max kick distance by quite a bit. For this, because it's going to be a rebuild situation, I'm going to go with the much higher overall, but in a user league, I'd probably go Joey Sly. And then for punter, because once again, you can't develop punter. It's a no-brainer now. Jack Fox, who is really good kick power and um, kick anchors anyways, is the choice. There's no question about it. Superstar development trade. There's no arguing it anymore. Used to be between Dixon and J.K. Scott. Now it's just J.K. It's Jack Fox. Funny. And then we're in round 38, and the great fullbacks are still here. Use check. I mean, he's not crazy great for run block. I probably wouldn't go with him anyways because he's on the older side. Uh, Patrick Ricard, he's a bit younger. Uh, more fun. He's huge, obviously. And then I think Alec Engel is by far the best based on age. Um, it's really kind of, you know, really what you want. But for me, I'd probably go with Patrick Ricard. Super strong, fun because he's huge. 27, usable for at least four or five seasons at most uh, minimum. Then you can just draft a new guy if you really wanted to. And then honestly, that's kind of where my list ends. I mean, there's... Probably a lot of backup talent, but there's no must-grab guy that you need to get, you know, just to, to... Otherwise, you're just some sort of loser guy, right? Like, you can go with Neiman because he's fast. Really just look for the athletic guys. Cameron McRone's another guy, you know, young, fast. But, you know, these are all kind of developmental pieces, so it really doesn't matter. It's not like a, once again, must-grab player. Another guy, speaking of, Javen White. 
super fast. He is 24, but once again, 91 speed, 92 excel. All great players, but overall, it's just grab who you think is great for speed and all that. Corner, Perry Nickerson, 26 years old, but super fast. Maybe even your return guy. I would say Clay Brooks is probably better, though, because he's you know a little bit younger, 24. Who else? Let's Do we have like a, a good option here? Uh, where is this guy? Dorsey, 23. Not really liking that. There's got to be someone else here, right? Wilcox, I believe, was one of those guys. But, I mean, just guys, you know, you get the deal, right? You get the gist of it. And you know, we kind of sold on the, the quarterback a little bit. We don't even have a... A fun backup. Danuch. The Danucci. Jamie Newman's probably pretty slow. 81 speed. I mean, at this point, you're kind of just stuck with whoever's there. Chris Streveler is 26, but he's probably pretty fast. Like, you know, go with Chris Streveler if you want a fun, like, read option guy, maybe. Bryce Perkins. Pretty fun. That's probably who I would go with. He's 83 throw power, but he's fun. Uh, is Cole McDonald gone? I actually didn't even look. Cole McDonald is a great backup, and... If you've been following our Dolphins franchise, you know that he's gotten like two, maybe three throw power upgrades. I believe he's like a 59 overall, so he's probably gone. But yeah, that's someone I would target. Oh, no, he's still there. Oh, and he's higher throw power in this universe. Oh, by far. 56 overall. I would debatably use this guy if you miss out on all these other quarterbacks. Not bad, but I mean, once again, you just grab linemen, grab... Grab athletic players. It's really all you can do. It's all we can ever ask from you. You know, another OP player, 24 years old, Jacob Harris, super fast. There might be a couple of other young options there, like not nah, Daryl Daniels older. It's got to be someone else here, right? Josh Oliver's probably 25, 24. So yeah, probably someone like Jacob Harris, I suppose. You know, grab him, 24, technically a wide receiver, but once again, can't yell at you because he's a tech, you know, tight end technically. You have other options, but Jakeem Grant is so fun on the return game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab him. I'm gonna grab him. Kind of wish I would have kept him in Dolphins franchise, but probably not the, worth the money, right? He's just a return man. So here is what the team looks like after putting everyone in the correct positions. I believe, of course, Alex Mack. You could put Kendrick Green there, which is I, I probably would. You have a lot of hidden development linemen, and uh, the best part is once again the positions you need to work on are the wide receivers. The quarterback, the tight end, all the fun positions to work on. Uh, yes, we could have gotten with a running back. You know, could have gotten with some, like, randomer. But, you know, it's easy to develop anyway. So you might as well just get a good one. Like Saquon, who's super fun. And, of course, already has 85 injury because of the plus four. So don't worry about that. Uh, Chark, you know, super fun, tall guy. Maybe don't even need Marshall. Maybe just put Tony at number two and Schwartz at number three. But it is what it is. Do what you want. Uh, lower overall, 78 overall. I think the league average is, like, 80-81. But outside of a few positions, you are kind of cooking. We do have to move this to a 4-3 real quick. Then we'll actually be able to show you how good it is. We'll take a look at that defense, of course. As you can see now, it makes a little bit more sense. You got some normals here, but once again, uh, maybe, like I said, instead of going for Devin White, you go for Jeffrey Simmons to play DT. Uh, there might have been an option for DN, but it's not the easiest position to grab. So unless you were going to pass up on Marlon Humphrey, or actually might have been able to pass up on Ward for Ed Oliver, who could have played Edge or DT. Uh, I think it's still a good team. Once again, pass rush is real hit or miss anyways. So having lockdown corners is, no matter what your sliders are, lockdown corners are going to lock down, simply put. This is a sick team. I mean, you'd have to develop the linebacker a little bit, Baron Browning, or you could use Diablo. Super fun user, though. Uh, D-line is really what you have to draft, which is obviously what we're going to focus on in the rebuild of this. And then offense, there's nothing you need. There's literally nothing. It's all set. I, I don't know what you draft. I really don't. You, you, you offense, you just ignore, I guess. Um, some of the overalls are lower, like we said. But you know, after maybe season one is over, we'll already be either tied for already the best team in the league. And once again, lower overalls, but fun players. Basham, he's 23, which sucks, but 86 speed, 87 acceleration, solid block shed, decent enough finesse for a 281 pounder. Is super fun. Then you have Tyler Shelvin, who's 346. Togi, uh, a lot of potential at 21. And then Miles Garrett, who just, he hammers. He carries, he just basically carries. Maybe even could have went with Donald instead. But look at these abilities, like edge threat with um, adrenaline rush. What even does this do? Okay, well, that's not that great, to be fair. But edge threat's obviously a filthy ability. Unstoppable force is really good, and he's just insane. And then once again, let's actually compare or not compare, but confirm these abilities for Marlon Humphrey. Short route KO and deep route KO. So it's not even deep zone, it's deep route, which means that if he's in man coverage, 
he basically doesn't lose. He, he literally doesn't lose. Unless you throw it in the 11 to 19 yard range, which even then with a press is going to be hard to get. He's just impossible. He's, he's He may be best. He might be the best cornerback in the game. He very well could be. It would not surprise me. Let me take a look at the other corners and compare the the ratings. Of course, uh, some of the other guys are locked down with their 99-man, 99 zone, like uh, I believe Jalen Ramsey has. But let's take a look. So bottleneck, I don't even know what that ability does, but who asked? Bench press is all right. Uh, one step ahead is filth, but I'm pretty sure they toned that down. So I would say abilities way better. Way better than uh, Ramsey. Abilities on Gilmore, probably one step ahead again. Yep, and then flat zone, which is decent enough, fair enough. Uh, Jair, I'd imagine maybe acrobats. Short route KO, and then deep out KO. So not as good. Similar, but not as good as uh, Marlon Humphrey. Trey White would probably has some really good abilities, though, doesn't he? He has acrobat and medium route KO. That's actually really solid. So Trey White and Marlon Humphrey are really the two best cornerbacks in the game, in my opinion. I don't really know about Slay, actually. What's his uh, thingy? Uh, deep route. I mean, solid. But yeah, Marlon Humphrey, I think, has the best cornerback stuff in the game. I think he's actually got the best. I know the other guys we just looked at right there that passed a lot of uh, not great abilities. But I think Marlon Humphrey is the best corner in the game with those abilities. I mean, it basically makes him impossible to beat on press man. Like, I don't, I don't know how you beat him. He literally has the most OP abilities. So... I probably wouldn't pass on Marlon Humphrey, simply put. Everyone else, you can make an argument for literally every other player outside of maybe Isaiah Simmons and uh, Marlon Humphrey. But yeah, those two are the guys. Either way, it's a great team, and we will be rebuilding this most likely tomorrow. Uh, you know, it'll be live on the channel, and if not, oh well, maybe Monday or something. I don't know, because I do like to kind of, I wouldn't say take off on Sunday, but... With all the games going on, most people don't even see the uploads because there's already just so much content for NFL popping around that it's not even really worth me uploading, but I do kind of want to. So we'll see. But yeah, this is going to be, or that was, the uh, How to Draft a Perfect Fantasy Draft Team updated. Once again, lots of fun players to develop. Not everything set in stone. If you went with the Mahomes route, I mean, that's up to you. But once again, I just don't think that's the most fun route. I really don't. I just... I rather develop my quarterbacks. I rather develop my wide receivers, and yeah, that's pretty much that. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, maybe leave a like. We, you know, it took me a long time. It took me two hours to record. I don't know what the hell happened. Hopefully, the video is at least less than like an hour. Uh, it took me like forty-five minutes to to gather info on where players went, and then obviously I still have to freaking edit the damn thing. But overall, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it, and maybe we'll have another one of these when the playoffs start or when the Super Bowl is over, something like that. But yeah, maybe leave a like, subscribe, like I said. Follow me on Twitter, Jump Care, second channel, Pierre Plays, and then twitch.tv slash Jump Care for streams, which likely will be one tomorrow night. Around, or not even around, but right at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time is the plan. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you come back for next video. But until next video, see ya! Did you just say I want to have a gangbang with you? Fair enough. I mean, straightforward, I guess. It's one way to do it. Are you a cock? Cock and do it. <laughs> Not even cock and doodle do, just cock and do it. Holy crap! I y'all You got the hands of a god! Oh! Jesus! Oh! Oh damn, that was way too dank for him. Look at him! He's wheeling! It's too dank. <laughs> Look at him go. It was too dank of a turn. He's spamming. He's spamming. I died. Yo, if we were fighting to the death. Here he just, uh, oh, am I going to lose all my weapons now? Yo! He killed me.